Well, it's the end of the year and the EV industry is in turmoil as the legacy auto discover that EVs are not that easy to make, despite what they believed. And once they've fleeced their early adopters, not enough people want their EV offerings to make it a viable business. All this at a time when EV sales are booming. So what does 2024 hold for us? I'm Dave, welcome to Dave Takes It On, and my predictions for 2024. Bookmark this video and I'll see you in 12 months. Start with Legacy Auto. Having discovered that making desirable high-tech EVs is not directly transferable to their existing ice production knowledge and methods, Legacy Auto will revert to what they know best. There'll be a rush to ramp up output of ice and hybrid cars as they still have around 11 years of legal new car sales ahead of them until the bans many of which will not actually happen, come into force. Unfortunately, they'll find that the market has already moved on, as Nokia and Kodak discovered 20 years ago. Yeah, people will still buy ice and hybrid cars for many years to come, but the volumes will be severely lower and threaten to drop out of mass production altogether, thus dramatically raising prices well above their EV equivalent. My prediction, Legacy Auto EV production and expansion plans, plans will be put on hold for the entire year, despite countless claims that all is going really well and they're back on stream. There'll be a massive drive to make premium models for higher profits, and that will fail. And there'll be huge discounting of ice and hybrids that they're producing as the reality sets in. They can't get back to the figures they used to get. The National Grid. Well, the grid will continue to grow and invest heavily in green, green renewable technologies. Battery storage will see a massive expansion as companies and investors realise that buying cheap, excess electricity from the grid when available and selling it back to the grid when demanded is a business model all in itself and produces profits higher than generating electricity in the first place. But demand will threaten available capacity on a number of occasions in 2024 and emergency measures will need to be implemented at an increasing rate. Charging networks will take over the role of the DNOs in installing the substations and connections needed for EV chargers. And that's been holding back the, uh, the expansion of EV chargers all this time. So we're going to see a massive increase in these EV charging installations. So a good prediction, there'll be no blackouts caused by over-demand, but there will be increasing blackouts and outages from storm damage as the frequency and intensity of storms increases. More private grid-connected battery storage will be installed as businesses realise they can get a cheap, stable supply of their own and make a profit if they run their own mega packs. EV charging. Well, expansion, as said, will, will continue, driven by generous grants and tax breaks, and the number of charges will grow exponentially worldwide. Reliability will become a serious issue, and grants will be withdrawn from and fines issued to offenders. My prediction, charging numbers will grow exponentially throughout the year. Tesla will continue to open up superchargers to non-Teslas, to meet their legal commitments, but at a slower pace, only sufficient to meet those commitments no further. Tesla will confirm that the supercharger network is one of the biggest reasons why people buy Teslas. They will increase the rate of super, supercharger installations worldwide and retain a large percentage of that new network exclusively for Tesla drivers in order to boost their new car sales growth. The EV Charging Consortium, headed by BMW, General Motors, Honda, Hyundai, Kia, Mercedes-Benz, Stellantis, uh, that recently announced a massive EV charging network by 2035, will barely get off the ground in 2024 as most legacy auto will just be cutting back EV production. As far as EV charging pricing, well, the charging networks enjoy an almost monopoly at present, and so the networks with access to easy sites, the likes of Apple Green, BP Pulse, MFG, EG, and GridServe, they'll see a massive growth in charges installed. However, the growth will begin to tail off towards the end of the year as competition begins to affect revenue. 
In my prediction, towards the end of 2024, Tesla will begin to open up a number of superchargers that are on the same site as the major competitors, sites like Rugby and Exeter, creating an instant price war as they did with the price cuts of the new EVs. Price of EV public charging will reduce significantly later in the year as competition sees their recently installed expensive chargers become almost totally unused. There's a bonus for us. Well, EV new car sales next. Tesla have announced the building of a gigafactory in Mexico and expansions in Shanghai, Texas and Berlin and they're exceeding their own sales targets year after year. Yeah, that includes this year. With Tesla set to ramp up Cybertruck production and sell all they can make and launch the Model 2 sub-25,000 uh, model in 2024-2025, a production rate never seen before, the Legacy Auto will revert to developing affordable EVs back where they should be. So sale of new EVs will continue to grow strongly. So my prediction EV sales will hit a new record again in 2024 and reach a new penetration figure of around 20% of all new car sales. The Cybertruck will become the world's best-selling pickup truck, despite not being able to ramp up production levels to meet anywhere near that demand. The Model 2 will launch in December 2024 and will instantly become the best ever launch of any product, with deliveries beginning in Q1 2025. Tesla will also announce at a new Gigafactory in 2024, it's likely to be India, and also another one in Europe later in the year, and a good chance it might be the UK. In addition to that, the Chinese are coming. They're heading over here. Already BYD are announcing they're launching, uh, building a factory in Hungary, and there are other companies heading to the UK, to France, to Germany, all from China there's going to be a massive growth in EV production, mainly coming from China, and many of those are specifically to overcome the loss of any tariffs or, or grants available for EV buyers. If your car is made in France, albeit in a Chinese factory, surely that will get a grant when you sell the car. Anyway, massive growth in factories. Now, technology. The new batteries being uh, announced all the time, and many of them are actually on the verge of reaching mass production. And they are offering much higher energy densities as well. Alongside that, we're getting much faster, lower power computers running AI, and they will launch in 2024. And that will give a massive leap in the capabilities and range of new EVs. So with those new high density batteries, battery sizes will decrease and the cost of making EVs will plummet. My prediction, EVs are going to become much cheaper, far better and much more available in 2024 than anything we've seen already. Now a surprise one, Optimus Robot. Ha! 2024 is the year of AI and the year of the robot. In 2024, Tesla's Optimus robot will come into use in Tesla factories, revolutionising the automation of EVs. You see, a human auto worker requires, what, £20 an hour plus? Uh, and also a massive additional cost to the employer in terms of national insurance, Holiday pay, sickness pay, they want feeding, nourishing, lighting, heating, and they need training. Plus, they take time off with, well, sick days, uh, illnesses, all sorts. So a typical worker, human, male or female, will probably provide on average around 30 hours of labour a week. And they do that for 48 weeks in the year. And that will amount to maybe 50000 in cost per year per employee. And the employer will need seven humans to cover 24 operations 365 days a year. 
at three each of the five days of the week and then another two or three at the weekend to cover weekends. And that will give them continuous output. The total cost of that, typically, to operate 24 hours a day, will be around £350,000 per year per post. Manpower is a massive cost to industry, and that's why Ford, General Motors and Volkswagen are currently sacking tens of thousands of workers. Now, a single Optimus robot, costing well, £50,000, maybe 100000 as a one-off payment, can provide the same output as those seven humans. So it's a fraction of the cost paid once compared to a massive cost paid annually. But these robots are better. They're infinitely, infinitely more flexible. See, to train a human takes time. Time out of work, going off to training, can spend hours, days or weeks in a typical year in some form of training to learn new skills. Now, with an AI, with a robot, Optimus, all you do is take one new one off the production line, you teach it a new skill, and then you send that skill via an over-the-air update to every single Optimus in the whole factory. And they're all trained in zero time. This is going to revolutionise revolutionize EV manufacturing. So my prediction, 2024 is the revolution in robotics and AI that will begin to transform the world as we know it. Well, renewable energy, boom in solar for domestic houses will continue, but new micro wind turbines will launch at an affordable price that will allow almost all houses to produce some or even most of their own electricity. Wind farms will again expand and solar PV will thrive. Tidal power will launch as a serious uh, opponent and there'll be trials in a number of areas throughout the UK. On contrary, nuclear power station plans, they'll finally be scrapped as the investment that's needed, government can't afford them, that investment will just simply dry up because there are cheaper, more immediate options available. My prediction, renewable, renewable energy will continue to take a larger percentage of total energy production throughout 2024. Well, finally, su surprise prediction for 2024. Robotaxis. I believe robotaxis will launch in serious numbers, totally changing the way we organise our transport. Much like one robot can replace six, seven or eight humans in production, so robotaxis will replace the very cars that we own that, as we speak, are out on the drive, sat there doing nothing. In the future, you'll use robotaxis like Uber. You'll do away with your own private transport, and to get to work, you'll just book an Uber, a, a robotaxi every single day. Now, why hasn't this happened with Uber or others? Well, simple fact is, Uber and taxis, most of the fare that you pay, pays the driver. They don't work for free. Robotaxi doesn't have a driver. So most of the existing fare for taking a taxi will simply disappear when you launch robotaxis without drivers. The price is going to come down and all of a sudden with congestion charges increasing in numbers, making the cost of driving to work more expensive. So why will they replace the car? Well, at the moment, you have to jump in your car. It spends 90% of the time sat on the drive doing nothing or sat in a works car park doing nothing or sat in a paid public public car park doing nothing. Our cars don't do work most of the time. Roma taxis, on the other hand, will do. They don't have human drivers, so the cost of them will be reduced, nor will they pay congestion charges when they drive into city centres. They're electric. Nor do they have to sit around all day. What will happen is, if you commute every day, you'll simply book a robo-taxi at the same time every day. It will turn up outside your house. No driver, it just turns up. You jump in it, it will drive you to work, drop you off right outside the door. It doesn't need to park. 
and then it'll go and pick someone else up somewhere else and take them to work or take them home or whatever. Imagine, at the moment, if you want to go on holiday, you jump in your car. It's sat there 90% of the time doing nothing, but when you want to use it for holidays, you drive to the airport. It costs you money, but more importantly, when you get to the airport, you have to pay to park it. I had a couple of weeks away in Menorca recently. I spent over £100 for parking while I was away. <laughs> what a waste. But the alternative was to take a proper taxi with a driver. And I did that on one previous occasion. And that taxi for me, return, was £140. Now, let me ask you. When a robo-taxi will offer to pull up outside your house at any time, 3 o'clock in the morning if you want to, uh, no driver, so you're not inconvenienced anyone, and it will take me to the airport for 10 or £20, and then disappear off, do some work while I'm away on holiday, and then when I get back, it will be waiting for me at the airport, and it will drive me home for another 10 or £20. It's going to dramatically reduce the car, and I, for one, when these are available, will never use my car again and spend £100 in, a, in an airport car park, nor will I spend £140 on a taxi. Robot taxis will change my life. Oh, also, what if you want to go out for a drink? At the moment, if I go out for a drink with my wife or with family, I can't drive. Or I can't drink. I have a choice. And usually, I am the designated driver. I've got a seven-seater car, so it's me who drives. So I can't go out and drink and enjoy myself with others. Once robot taxis appear, that changes. I can go out, and not that I would... I could have 17 pints of beer if I wanted, get someone to throw me into the back of a robotaxi, and it'll drive me home. doesn't matter that I'm well over the legal limit, because the robotaxi isn't. So robotaxis, for me, personally, will mean I won't use my car for going away on holidays, I won't use my car for going out for a drink or a meal, and all of a sudden you're starting to think, hang on a minute... It used to spend about 90% of its time sat in the drive. In future, it's going to spend about 99% of its time in the drive. Why have I got one? And very quickly, there'll be a quick phone call to webuyanycar.com and it'll be gone and all that money will be in the bank. I won't replace it. Now, for some people particularly me, can't get rid of mine because I need it for my work, for making the videos. I can't go out and look at the charging scene in Exeter or Aberdeen uh, without a car. Robotaxis may not be a practical alternative for that sort of use. But certainly for the vast majority of people who commute, robotaxi will be a welcome addition once people get over their prejudice or fear or... I don't know what it'll be, but we will. Anyhow, that's the end of 2024. Bookmark this video and let's have a look in 12 months' time how close any of these got. And obviously, if you've got your own ideas, things that I've got wrong or things that I've missed and you think will happen in 2024, please get in touch with me with the comments down below. I'd be fascinated to, think, to, to, to learn what you think is going to happen in 2024. And don't forget, if you're bookmarking me, I'll bookmark your comments as well. So some of you might be in for a bit of a shock. But thanks very much for watching. I'm Dave. Well, thanks very much for watching this video. If you have enjoyed it, please click the like button. And if you would, please subscribe. It makes such a difference to us as a new channel. If you click the bell icon, the notification, you'll be notified the next time we launch a video. And a massive, massive, massive thank you, last but not least, to our Patreon members. This side of the business is growing dramatically. We've had our most successful month ever. And thank you so much for your support for the channel. I'm Dave.